Tom, can we pull up um, Defendant's Exhibit 170A, which has been admitted into evidence? Mr. Neumeister, um, is this, does this photo appear to be one that you have analyzed as part of your analysis in this case? There were many versions of this photo. Um, I would say there were dozens of different versions with different chromatic values, different file sizes, different physical sizes. Some had been through Photos 1 or Photos 3, which are photo editing software uh, programs. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time I'd like to um, show Mr. De Mr. Neumeister's demonstrative um, plaintiff's exhibit 1303. All right. Any other objection? I would object again, Your Honor, because the photograph in 170A is not in evidence. Right. Or, yeah, I mean, the photograph is in evidence. The None of the photographs he wishes to show the jury are in evidence. 1303 is in evidence over objection. Oh, not in evidence, I'm sorry, as a demonstrative. Just as a demonstrative. I'm sorry. Could we go to publishing this brief, please? So. And Mr. Neumeister, um, what does this demonstrative show about um, the photos that you analyzed? Well, they, they appear to be similar. However, if you look below at the file sizes, uh, one on the left is 712 kilobytes. The one in the middle is 489 kilobytes. And the one on the right is 524 kilobytes. Now, what's unusual about that is these photos will not digitally fingerprint with each other. They won't hash. In other words, forensically, they don't match. But the thing is, you could say, well, it was sent through email. Maybe it's a different size. This, the file sizes, for example, would be possibly, uh, you know, you can select the file size you send a photo, but there's no way to authenticate any photo that was presented in the way the evidence was collected. And so what conclusions do you draw from that? Well, there's, this is just three of many of the same type of photos that are all different sizes and have different chromatic, which means color. Objection, Your Honor. We just had a ruling on this. All right. Sustain objection. Mr. Inuestra, stick to your opinions that relate specifically to what you analyzed about the EXIF data, please. All three of these photos had to go through some type of transformation to change sizes. We can take that one down. Um, you mentioned um, the photos 1.5 and photos 3.0 earlier, I believe. Photos. What uh, is that? Photos 3 and photos 1.5 are editing programs that um, Macintosh or Apple put out with their product. It's for uh, editing photos. In other words, you would put a photo in and you would change the colors or you would crop it or you would clarify it by you know, enhancing, for example, the sharpening or you could darken it. Um, but when you save a photo through an editing program, you leave a mark on the EXIF data. And what is the EXIF data? The EXIF data is the data that is embedded in a photograph that tells you a lot about the photograph. And again, in the early days when we were using film cameras, you would write down the f-stop, which is the, the light setting. You would, you would write the type of lens you use, the time of day, um, the type of film stock, the type of filters you're using. Now with digital cameras, uh, that's done electronically. And there's about about a thousand lines of code, of which 50 are probably important, that tell you what the camera was doing. So what's the significance of EXIF data in your photo analysis? Well, in this situation, I can see that normally where the operating system of the camera would be, which means the version that the, of the operating system the phone is running on, it would normally say something like, I'll just throw out an arbitrary number, 9.1.3 operating system for iOS, which is Apple's iPhone operating system. Instead of saying that, it says software photos 3.0 or photos 1.0. That means that the photo had to be rendered, which means composited together in an editing program. Did you prepare a demonstrative that shows uh, some of your analysis of some of the EXIF data of the photos in this case? Yes, I did. Okay. Can we pull up 1304, please? Your Honor, may I approach? Yeah, okay. Permission to publish as a demonstrative, Your Honor. 
Any any objection? Any objection, Mr. I'm sorry, Murphy? Your Honor. My she was just to publish so it sorry. as a demonstrative. Um, uh, no objection is demonstrative. All right, thank you. We'll publish it as 1304, just as a demonstrative. And Mr. Neumeister, are, are these the images in this demonstrative excerpts from the report you prepared in this case? Yes, they are. And what do they show? On this particular uh, photo, and, and on all of them, it shows the first few lines of EXIF data, the ones that would be most important for this photograph. So, for example, things you would see, the very top line would be the make of a uh, phone. It's an Apple iPhone 6. And then the resolution is 72 pixels per inch, 72 to 1. Um, and instead, where it says software on a normal iPhone photo, it would, instead of saying Photos 3, it would say uh, the software version, for example, 9.3.1. And then you've got the date and the time of the photo uh, below that, uh, which is really easy to change in an EXIF editor. And below that, you have uh, things like the exact, uh, like the flash, you've got um, the exposure type, how long the exposure was. Uh, so what you just highlighted there again was the date and time. Uh, so that's uh, universal time code minus whatever area you're in uh, in the world. Anything else you want to show us with this demonstrative? Uh, yeah, just below that, if you look, uh, there's some. Um, things that would say, uh, for example, a directly photographed image, that is not going to be necessarily accurate once it's been through an editor. Uh, it will always pretty much say that. Um, so when you're looking at scene, scene type or auto exposure, um, these are things that, uh, that really don't matter all that much. What would matter is, um, for example, if you're taking notes, the focal length would be important, um, the pattern of metering. Things like that to a photographer would be would be important. And again, this is just a few lines, and the reason I put these in there was just to explain a bit what EXIF data is. Uh, the actual thing I'm trying to point out is the fact that instead of an operating system, it shows the um, uh, the editing program that was used on this photo. Um, are there additional photos that you did this analysis for? Yes, many. Um, can we scroll to the next page, please, Tom? Is there anything um, about this photo that you noted as part of your analysis, Mr. Neumeister? Yes, again, it's, it's uh, you know, right, right there you've got Photos 3.0 on that particular photo. And I think, you know, we pretty much covered what the, what the stuff is, but again, you see the Photos 3.0. And again, this could not come out of an iPhone this way. This would go into a computer, be edited, and rendered through the photo uh, editing, photo editor. And this, this would then be embedded in the um, EXIF data. Okay. Do you have other photos in this demonstrative? Yes. All right, can we scroll to the next page? Uh, same thing. You've got up here in the top, you've got the, uh, the photos 3.0. And this is uh, throughout a lot of the photos that are uh, in evidence or versions of the photos in evidence were gone through photos 3.0 or photos 1.5, an earlier version. Can we scroll to the next um, page, please, Tom? And what about this one? Uh, same thing, photos 3.0. And again, in a photo uh, editing app, you can do an awful lot of things. So when you see photos 3.0, first of all, you know it's not anywhere near an original. There's going to be compression artifacts because it's a JPEG file. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Can we move on um, to the next page of this um, demonstrative, please? And again, same thing. Uh, you've got the photos app. Okay. And I believe there's one final photo in this um, demonstrative. What about this one? Again, if you look up there, it says uh, photos 3.0 on that particular photo. All right, we can take that one down. Um, Your Honor, I have a little bit left. I don't know if you wanted to. All right, you want to take our afternoon. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess.